Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at the very Art Deco Surbiton station today and we're going to do an episode of Branch Line Britain. It's been a while since I've last done one of these. The last time I did one was the Chessington branch, which is also not too far from here on the Southwestern Railway Network. Today I'm going to do the Hampton Court branch. Now that way, that's looking towards London. About half a mile or so down there, we can't quite see it, but it's, there's the junction for Hampton Court. The line itself is only about one and a half miles long. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get, find my way out the station and we're going to go and find the junction and then we'll explore the branch line, we'll visit the intermediate station, we'll walk to Hampton Court and then we'll catch the train back. Just notice here, it's quite nice, look, it's a flower bed. It says it's done by the Friends of Surbiton Station. It's always nice when you get a little group like this who, um, you know, make the station look a bit nicer. We've got another one over there, I expect soon. This will all look really nice this when the flowers come out. Dinner. Anyway, I'm going to go now. So here we are, outside the front of Surbiton Station, we can see the Art Deco Ticket Hall. So this is the South Western Main Line, and this opens between Nine Elms and Woking Common in 1838. The station was originally here, there was a station called Kingston, about half a mile towards London. This Art Deco Station, complete with clock tower, was added in 1937, so it was 99 years old, or the line had been here for 99 years when they built this railway station. What we're going to do, we're going to go over here. Now what's quite interesting is there's one footbridge with two halves. Inside, that's inside the station. But this one here, this is outside the station, so in effect there's ticket barriers, but you can walk over this half of the bridge and you don't need a ticket, it's a public right of way. We've got the clock tower up there above us. So, we're going to go up here. The reason I'm taking you this way before we do the branch itself is there's a recent development to Surbiton Railway Station which I thought we might as well feature. Oh look at that. We're 12 miles and free chains, probably from Waterloo. I doubt it dates back to 9 hours. There's a, a to zero in the station. Walk over here. So there's a lift shaft behind there. We've got these windows but there's no window on this side because on the other side of that wall is the part of the station inside ticket barriers. We look through here. There's no glass in these windows. See, I'll put my hand through. So if a steam train was coming, you don't get many running this way on this section of the track, but you get quite a good shot from here. You just get no going away shots. Have a look at that. So that's looking towards London. So the original station, like I say, it's about half a mile that way, and it was called Kingston. Now it's been a bit of a new development to the station. In fact, I don't even think it's quite open. Out there, you can see just whiteness. There's a new extension to the station. See here, they've built this extension here. They've put a new gate line in. So there's now three gate lines. So this is the newest part of the station. But they've kept up the Art Deco theme. So if you look out there, you can see out to sort of 1930s flats. Again, looking towards London. So this is the new part of the station. So all of this, I don't know when that's going to open, but should be quite soon. Possibly by the time you watch this video, it will have opened. So we go back to here outside the ticket barriers and then that is inside ticket barriers ticket office and then if we go down these steps here this will take us to the other entrance of Turpentin station i'm going to go and walk through the housing estate and we'll talk more about the hampton court branch the main subject of this video so we get to here and um, well, there's another ticket office although that's not actually open i don't know what's in there perhaps i should make it into a pub um, and then that, uh, this is all the new extension, what we can see here. I'm going to head off in that direction through the housing estate. Let's go find out to call. I'm now about half a mile away from Surbiton Town Centre and I'm in a housing estate. On the other side of behind those houses is the southwestern main line. Now, the whole reason for the Hampton Court branch goes back to 1838. That's when Queen Victoria opened Hampton Court Palace up to visitors. So visitors would have travelled from central London or maybe into London. They'd have travelled by train to go and visit the palace. And the nearest station was Esher. Now Esher was a good two miles, two and a half miles away. I suppose it was like an old horse and coach bus. So it was decided a railway would be the ideal solution going to Hampton Court. So, I think it was in 1846, permission was granted. In 1848, they began building the railway. 
it opened in 1849. And when it opened, it was nothing like the railway is today. It wasn't even steam powered, it was horse powered. A horse would pull a coach up and down, and then the coach would be attached to trains in the area of Surbiton and continue on up to London. That was how you travelled to and from Hampton Court. Also, it had just like you know, a junction straight off the main line like that. But as times went on, the service got busier. And I think it was 1916, they electrified the line. So it's not been steam for a long time. But in 1915, the year before electrification, it was found that there were too many conflicting moves. Trains heading out of London, having to cross the main lines to head north towards Hampton Court was, you know, a conflicting move. So something else was needed. And they built a flyover. And that's this flyover here. See this viaduct? You can see there's two viaducts. You can actually see a bridge behind it. This side up here, this is what carries the down Hampton Court trains to, towards Hampton Court. So when they leave Surbiton, they continue along on the down slow, they branch off and they take this viaduct. And then this viaduct takes them up and over the South Western Railway. As we get closer, we'll be able to have a better look. You can see beyond there's another bridge, that is the main South Western Railway. So when trains travel in the opposite direction, they don't have to take the flyover. We'll have a look because this junction is quite spread out. So it's sort of, it's a funny junction because it's in between various houses, get across the road. You can see it's quite an extensive viaduct. If we go under the viaduct, we'll get a better view looking westwards. You'll see how big the viaduct is. So as I say, trains only go over it in that direction. Um, you won't ever get a train going towards London over this viaduct. We're now walking under it. So you can see it's only the width of a single track, it's only ever been single track, it only ever needs to be single track. If you look down there, you can see it curving, and you might just be able to see there, that's a girder bridge, that actually goes over the tracks of the southwestern main line. Looking that way, you can see a bit more of the viaduct, and here, this is the southwestern main line, it looks like this has been widened at some point, you can see the original brick arch bridge, and now we have a girder bridge as well. I'm going to continue that way, we're going to go and find a bit more of this viaduct, further on up towards Hampton Court. We're not quite at Thames Ditton Station yet, the one intermediate station on the branch, but this is Thames Ditton Green. We've walked through Long Ditton where there is no railway station. This is Thames Ditton, here you go, let you can see, rather nice, there's Thames Ditton. The very elongated junction is behind the houses over there, so I'm going to go off on, down one of those roads over there and let's see a bit more of that junction. I'm now just around the corner in Claygate Lane and I'm heading towards the railway line. I can just hear a train. It's not going over those bridges because that is the branch line bridges. You might, yeah, just be able to see it in this. We'll go over that in a minute. Something slightly more unexpected to find in a branch line Britain video. It's actually another branch of itself. Look, there's a turntable and there's a miniature railway. This is the Thames, this is a miniature railway. We're not going on that today because it isn't running. Have been here in the past and at some point I will come and do a miniature railway Britain video. If you want to see what a ride is like, click the link on the screen now. We can see a trip around there, although we don't actually do this branch, but it's the Malden and District Society of Model Engineers. So at some point in the future, we must come and do this. It's a brilliant miniature railway. Back to full-size railways. Um, on, if you're travelling on full-size railway, you can catch a glimpse of the miniature railway. Let's have another look at the railway subject today, the Hampton Court branch. So, look here, we've got a bridge, and then above it is another bridge. So that must be the end of that flyover. So the bridge here, this is the upper train from Hampton Court, will go over this bridge heading towards London. And I think if we have a look here, um, if you look just up there, you can just see the other bridge. So that's the, the down line. So once again, like we were earlier, we're gonna be here, should be in between the two lines. Well, maybe not quite, because if you think about it, like I said, the flyover wasn't originally there. So originally it would have just been this bridge and just a little bridge and they had to get that flyover. So yeah, this is quite exciting. As we go under here, you can see the arch. There's like another arch, an even bigger arch, or an arch within an arch. That is the new flyover built against 
the exist, existing brick bridge. So if you look back, look, arch within an arch. So that is the 1916 built flyover. Also to added of interest, that looks like a substation. Claygate Lane Bridge. So I think that's a substation for the railway. So there you are, look. You've got the two different eras of railway bridge. To add to the um, confusion or excitement, whichever way you look at it, that bridge there, that carries the southwest of mainline. You may have noticed there's another bridge beyond that. That's not really anything to do with today's video, but that is the line that goes down to Guildford via Claygate. So trains heading towards Guildford would take that bridge, but coming back, oh, there's a train. You can't see it, there is a train. They come underneath the main line and up on this side. Maybe we'll, another day we'll do a video on that. So we're in you know, quite a complex of junctions. I'm going to walk off up here and hopefully we'll find Thames Ditton Station. And now we've been walking through the woods for a little way, following the route of the railway. I've just sort of followed my way down various footpaths. And I think I've come to the first intermediate station up there. That looks like Thames Ditton Station, as we've already found the village green. So it's quite away from there, it's sort of about half a mile away. Okay, I probably could have come a quick away from where the green was, but because we were looking at the junction, I came this way. And this station isn't quite original. It opened in 1851, so the branch was two years old when they decided to add Thames Ditton Station in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up, there's a ramp on this side, go up there, we can have a look at the station building, and I'm going to continue my walk to Hampton Court, so it's not particularly fast. We get to here, you can see the... Um, there's the double arrows, there's a bridge, so that's looking towards Hampton Court that way. And then this is the down platform. Probably not many people actually walk up here and get on the train to Hampton Court because, you know, it's only, well, half a mile at the most. It's not a very long, no, maybe a little bit more, it's not a very long journey. Anyway, so it's uh, not, but probably quite a lot of people on the other side will go up the other side and head towards London. There is the Dissing Station. Straight onto the platform. I mean, today, as usual, when I go to London, I've got a day travel card, which thank God they didn't kill off like they were planning to. That would have probably meant making these videos a lot more difficult than it is, but it didn't happen, so no point complaining about that. We're going to go up this long, long slope. Reminds me a bit when I did the Greenford branch of some of the railway stations we had on there. Um, was it Drayton Green and Castle Bar Park? No, not Drayton Green, Castle Bar Park. Well, had this feel of a long slope which you walk up to get to the station when we get to here in front of us we should see the station building having a bit of work done scaffolding up on it next train going to hampton court i noticed as i was coming up it did say calling it hampton court only which well it can only call it hampton court and then that way is looking down towards london so this is thames distance I'm going to leave the station now. I might hang around to see a train, see if there is one coming soon. If not, I'm just going to continue back down there, follow my way through the housing estate. Let's go and find what there is around Hampton Court. I'll just come out of Thames Ditton Station again as we arrived. I mentioned this bridge. I feel like this bridge deserves a little bit more attention than I originally thought to gave it. It looks fairly, you know, just like any other bridge, two arches. But what's quite funny is these cars are now demonstrating it's become a roundabout. I don't think when they built this bridge they ever intended it would be a roundabout. So you've got the road going off down there, and then you've got this one here, Ember Court Road. We'll get on to why this is called the Ember Court Road a bit later. So I think originally it was just two separate roads and there's this, what you could call like a miniature little park or common. I think this probably once went right up to the, the bridge. I might be wrong, but I don't think it was intended to become quite the, what I think is an official roundabout. I don't think when the builders built it, they intended for it to be an official roundabout. But I, I like it how, you know, when things develop like that and 
they're built in one way and they find they're quite useful for another way. So it kind of means if you're coming down this road here, you want to go up here, you actually have to go under the bridge. But possibly when it was open, you may well have had to have walked under the bridge as I'm doing now. As we come under the bridge, you can just see over there, that's the entrance to the up platform. If you're traveling to London, you'll go up there. I'm going to walk off down here now into this housing estate and I'm going to make my way to Hampton Court itself. Not too far now from Hampton Court Station. I'm now on Summer Road. I've noticed a little cul-de-sac going off there. That's called Summer Crossing. If you wonder why, well, here's the answer. Here is the only level crossing on the branch. Now, there's not a train coming just now, so we'll walk across. And just up there is Hampton Court Station. So if a train departs on the other track, just there, so if a train departs on this track, there's the crossing over to the to the upline. I don't like to hang about on crossings. I always feel, you know, you should, it's all right to watch a train from outside a crossing, but I just never like hanging about on crossings. So we've now crossed the railway. So we're back on this side. I'm going to continue on up there and we're going to go and have a look at the River Mole and the River Ember. There's a reason why. I'll tell you when we get there. Well, it's a slight change of subject now from railways, but it'll become obvious why in a minute. This is the River Ember. But that waterfall there, that's the River Mole flowing in to the River Ember. We've featured the River Mole before. Last year we went to Paints Hill Park over in Cobham. So if you want to see that, have a look at link on screen now. Completely different video featuring the River Mole. The reason this is all relevant is the River Mole never used to come down here. We're standing on a bridge here. This bridge was designed by Edwin Lutchins. There's another one round the corner. You're probably thinking, isn't Hampton Court on the River Thames? You are right, it is on the Thames. We'll get to that in a minute. The River Mole would have continued on down there and into the Thames, but when they redesigned the road and Edwin Lutchins built this bridge and the bridge just over the Thames over there, they rerouted the mole here into the River Ember so all the water can flow out there. And we've literally just missed it, but see those lights there? That is the platforms of the railway station. It might be easier said than done me getting across the road. It's quite busy. Well, there's a gap after these two Skodas. If I can get across the road, and if we can get, you know, a gap on the other side, um, I'll be able to show you what we're talking about. And I'm not going to run. Um, okay, I'll show you when I get there. This might be a while. Here we are, we're on the other side of the road, and this is where the River Ember flows out beneath the platform of Hampton Court Station. So probably most people who get on the train here may not even be aware that Hampton Court Station, Hampton Court, that's so associated with the River Thames, its platform's actually straddled the River Ember stroke water from the River Mole, but it does. People like me, as we probably will do, when I go on a train somewhere like here, I always go right down the end, because it's always less busy down the end, so you generally get a quieter journey when you get to water, you're already by the buffers. So, this is the first Edwin Lutchins bridge. I know it's not technically to do the railway. I do like Edwin Lutchins' architecture. Last year, when I went to France, I was visiting narrow gauge railways, but I had to stop and have a look at one of um, the Edwin Lutchins war memorials, this one here. So I think he's a fantastic architect. Maybe another day we'll do a video on Edwin Lutchins architecture, um, possibly in the future. Anyway, Hampton Court Station, let's go over the Thames now. Just a little way on from the bridge, you probably would never have realised if I certainly hadn't, but there is a slight dip in the ground. That's because that is the disused course of the River Mole, as I've already mentioned, it's been diverted. This is Hampton Court Station, having a bit of work done. It's thought it was designed by William Tyke, the station building, although that's never actually been confirmed. What I'm going to do, if we go across here, I'm going to try and get to the bridge. So although this is the railway station here in front of us, complete with a picture of the palace itself. We're not going in there just yet. We're going to go in there in a minute. We'll have a look at the station. I just thought we can't come to Hampton Court without, you know, having a look at the river, possibly the palace itself. So that's the end of the railway there. There seems to be a lot of work going on, but we are here. We are at Hampton Court. We're just walking up here now towards the Thames and the other bridge by Edwin Lutchins. So the River Mole would have flowed off down there and just like I say somewhere just down there would have flown into the River Thames actually yeah just, just looking ahead deciding which route to take I can see the palace there's quite a nice little 
raised area. Let's go up here. There's the palace over there. Let's go up this, up these steps. Oh, this is cool. So we're, we're on the Edward Lutchins Bridge. Over there, we made it to the Thames. Over there is the palace. The whole point of building this railway, obviously the branch and the station, Hampton Court, take their name from the palace. Here's Edwin Lutchins Bridge. It's a really nice bridge. Like I say, I really like Edwin Lutchins architecture. I'm going to go over to the railway station now and get my train home. Here we are, we're on the platforms now at Hampton Court Station. That's the station building back there. I think the cannabis probably did come down further once. Um, I'm not too sure. If you know, do comment and tell me. There are ticket barriers here now. So um, it's the only station, well, I say it's the only station on the branch. There's only two. Thames Distant has gotten Hampton Court hasn't. There would have been more platforms here. As you can see, there's a platform there out of use. I don't think there's probably much chance of it ever being put back into use because I think the two platforms they've currently got is more than enough. What we're gonna do, before we catch the train, the train obviously hasn't arrived yet, we're gonna walk over the river again, just because we can and it's novel, you know. I'm trying to think where else is there a railway station which platforms straddle a river. Shrewsbury does with the River Seven, although it's not that well known. Not many people actually realize it does, but it does. So when we get to here, we can see the Edwin Lutchins Bridge so it's like the little sister of the bridge over the Thames at Hampton Court. So that's where we were a moment ago. Interestingly, it looks like there either were, or they built provision for, having more tracks crossing the river. You can see the abutments stick out a lot further. There would, of course, been a goods yard there. Like most railway stations, the goods yard has become the inevitable car park. I'm going to hang around here now at Hampton Court in Zone 6 and wait for my class 455 to take me back. Well, Class 455, they've been the staple diet on this branch for quite a long time now, probably ever since they came in. At one point, Class 456s worked here, but they've all been scrapped. They used to make the eight car trains 10 cars. I think that's a shame, you know, they, they cut back and scrapped them, but yeah, they're gone, they didn't even preserve one. I don't know if any other Southern EMUs have ever been down here, whether the 450s ever have. Again, if you know, do comment and tell me. I'll tell you the most unusual thing I've ever seen. I did once see a Class 20 down here, I think it was um, one of the rail talk it's probably Pathfinder did a buffer puffer which went up and down this branch, the Chessington branch, the Windsor branch. So I have seen a loco hall train down here, a passenger one as well, which is very unusual. Right, I'm going to wait for my, what is very, very likely to be a class 455 back to London. There we are, we're just pulling out of Hampton Court Station on a class 455 on the way back to Waterloo. As I said, these trains have been the staple diet of this line for, well, ever since they've been around longer than I've been alive for that many years. That will change soon because now the class 701s, the first few have entered service, eventually they will take over and we'll see them coming along here. I've got one more thing I want to show you. I don't know if it's going to work, but I want to show you the flyover from the train. I'm thinking in a minute when we go get there, I'll press the camera up against the window and you should get a view of the flyover as we join the main line.
There we go, that's us passed over flyover, or passed beside the flyover, should I say. We're now on the southwestern main line. We're stopping at Surbiton soon. I'm going to stay on the train back to Waterloo and go home. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to do more Branch Line Britain videos this year, so do keep an eye out for them. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from a class 455 in their final days heading towards Waterloo,